When uh, Hitch ran this picture just for Ben Hecht, who was a prominent writer of the time, when the lights came up in the projection room, just the two of them, and Ben Hecht had witnessed the scene of my sleeve going and scene by scene, <laughs> the lights came up, and his first remark to Hitchcock was done. A picture. He didn't say good or bad. He said, you said, he should have had a better tailor. <laughs> <laughs> that scene still, for, for particularly anyone who's a little apprehensive of heights, is still <laughs> the issue that, you know, and not only you holding on, but Bob Cummings climbing back up. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so, God, I would not like to do it. Uh, just for the record, how did they how did they film that scene with you hold with Cummings there on the uh, on Statue of Liberty? Should I really reveal this after <laughs> I know you never talked about this. I've never <laughs> revealed this. <laughs> but I love this audience, so I will. <laughs> But before I get into the <laughs> devious technicality, I want you all to know that that backflip over the railing that I did was me. <laughs> Ah, Davy Sharp. I'll tell you what was Davy Sharp, and we'll get around to the question later, which is what I want. Uh, Davy Sharp was one of the top stuntmen. He was not a tall fellow, he was about five, six, or seven. Uh, but years later, they, the stuntmen created, instead of an Oscar for a great performance, they created a Davy Sharp for De in honor of Davy Sharp, who had passed away. And then uh, they found that so many men did a stunt on a picture, usually, that it couldn't go to one man. So they discontinued that. But the moment that I fall into the crotch of the thumb and forefinger <laughs> of the statue holding the torch, the statue, the wrist, the arm, the wrist, and the hand were all the exact scale of the Statue of Liberty and the railing. So when Davy fell from when I did the backflip, Hitchcock then cut to the pole, which was Davy Sharp. And you saw this in a long shot. You saw the body going through the air. And he caught on between the thumb and the forefinger, which is where we played the rest of the scene. Davy Sharp, that's the exact, those are the exact dimensions of the Statue of Liberty's hand. It's a lot of footage. It's a long fall. He did it in one take. Without a net, nothing. Boom. Caught. So I've always had this the feeling of thanks to Davy that I didn't have to do it again. <laughs> In those days, they didn't have the sophisticated, beautifully developed technological means they have today. You had to do things a little more primitively. But you know, still very effective. Now, there was at that time in Hollywood, uh, there were uh, cameramen who were known as trick cameramen. And the most prominent of all was a man named John Fulton. Johnny Fulton was a top trick cameraman, and he shot this scene. Uh, the cameraman for the picture was named Joe Valentine. He shot everything else. But for this trick, this shot, which I finally will reveal to you. Uh, 
Uh, so this shot, he, they brought in Johnny with his trick camera, and he arranged the setup with Bob Boyle, who was the art director. I would like to point out, Bob died not long ago, and he was a friend of mine since the day we made this picture in 1942 until his passing, a dear, dear friend. The basis of our friendship, which I'm sure many of you had with your friends, was that we were in total disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> About everything. About everything. But particularly this shot. <laughs> <laughs> he said a certain thing happened, and I said another thing happened. I said to him, I was there. He said, so was I. <laughs> and at his memorial, I insisted I was right. <laughs> I couldn't lose. <laughs> so, Johnny and Bob Boyle, because of, Bob was there because of the set, Johnny worked up the device. They laid a black ground floor and put a pipe on it. And on top of this pipe, which is about four, four feet high, and this is where Bob Oil and I disagreed, I said there was a saddle-like affair on which I sat. Bob Oil always said it, it was a chair. I said, now, Bob, you I'd remember if I sat in a chair or a saddle. He said, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> As I described you in that one office, it was a saddle. <laughs> and I sat in. Now, the ground floor, there, it was called the mat shop. They were going to paint in what you saw as the base. That is the point of view of the boat, the little pier where the boat came in, and uh, all the ground outside the statue. This is all a match shot. When I sat on this set, previous to that, we had done the scene where I'm holding on and you have this big head close up of my pleading with Bob Cummings to please help me and so forth. That was done on the arm holding the torch. For the purposes of shooting, that arm was removed from the statue and put down so that actually I was lying on my stomach, on the arm, and holding on to the edge. It was free of the statue so they could get behind it and shoot it. This piece, after we shot those close-ups of my bleeding and safe, this piece was then taken and put under a platform that was suspended from the ceiling of the stage, which I would then say was about 20 feet. This platform had a square hole in it. The camera shot through that hole. The arm was attached to the bottom of the platform. I sat on this saddle, <laughs> holding on to the edge, as you saw in the close-up, and on a cue, this platform camera going and a cameraman on it went perpendicularly straight up into the air mm -hmm. to the ceiling. And so that was the fall. Yeah. It was in reverse. Uh, the interesting thing is they grounded, as they used to say, at different speeds. So <coughs> there's no point in my going to that with you, but uh, 
they were uncertain at the time they shot it what would be the correct result. So we shot it at about four or five different speeds. Mm -hmm. And they determined which one looked best. And that was how we shot. Bob Boyle, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs>